Now we can jump to the last conversation of the day. What a day. I don't know how you are, but wow, this is being a lot. Um, I'm super happy anyway, but to be here. But now from this conversation, thank you to Patagonia, we are going to totally another topic and we are going to the other side of the world. So we are going to jump now to the US. Um, we are going to have a really special presentation with Sam, who is going to show us a bit of what he has been doing. So and the thing with Sam is that he has a really passionate story, I will say. And he has been involved with it since he was a kid. And well, what shows better that how in, in involved he is with his project that the title of his talk today, that is how to change the world with a crazy idea. So let's welcome Sam to the stage. So Sam, I'm now seeing you and Great. you are going live now. Awesome. Thank you, Carl. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm in New York, so a few, you know, a few hours behind. But uh, yeah. let me just share Super my Super shiny. We are already here quite dark, <laughs> but yeah. Yes. So thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, yeah, I'm really amazed uh, since I knew your story. I just contacted you and I told you, like, we really need to have you in this event because I really think it's really nice what you have been doing um, since a uh, young age, you were able to see how important the plastic pollution was. And yeah, just being kids, you and your siblings started to do something. So what I find it is fascinating. And somehow um, this is what we have seen also in the last year more and more kids are getting into the topic what i think is um not so good no because kids need to be kids and now also we need to worry about these kind of of topics no but it's nice also to see how you have been doing this for such a long time and well now i'm gonna leave you the stage if you want you can share your screen just to see that everything is working sounds good can you see my uh, presentation here? Okay, one moment, it's loading. Okay, yes, now. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you in the stage. The stage is yours and I'll be back for the Q&A. Perfect, thank you, Carl. Thanks, Elisam. Hey, everybody. Um, nice to be here. It's great to see that you know, a Zero Waste Berlin Festival is happening despite everything going on. Uh, but my name is Sam. I'm here in New York and I co-founded Make a Change World, which is uh, an environmental media and environmental organization um, with my brother, Gary, who lives in Bali in Indonesia, and my sister, Kelly, who lives in Paris in France. So it's the three of us. Uh, we're spread out a little bit all over the world. But like I said, we focus on um, media and um, we really believe that no idea is crazy enough when it comes to protecting our planet. And I think Coral described it super well. Uh, youth activism is on the rise. And you know, we're seeing amazing movements around the world um, to really tackle climate change and other environmental issues. And so we you know, are super passionate about plastic pollution, climate change, but we're also super passionate about adventure and coming up with ways that are creative to raise awareness about these causes. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm now 23 years old, but I grew up, I moved to Bali, Indonesia when I was seven years old. And unfortunately, uh, as I'm sure you guys have seen similar photos, beaches in Bali look like this. Um, so you pretty much can't even see the sand sometimes because it's so covered in plastic pollution. So it's obviously a, de a devastating um, problem and it's washing up on the shores every single day. Um, so when I was 12, when my brother was 14 and my sister was 16, um, 10 years ago, we thought, what can we do to, to try to solve this problem? And, you know, at the age of 12, there's not much we can do, but we had two hands. And so we thought, let's just do beach cleanups. Uh, so we started organizing weekly beach cleanups every Saturday. And what started as a small movement uh, with my brother, my sister and I eventually grew every weekend. We start inviting friends, local schools, local businesses, local governments. Um, and it was an amazing little movement that started 10 years ago. 
But we quickly realized that despite this movement growing and seeing this community come together, the trash would come right back. So we decided to focus our efforts to visual storytelling um, and media and also focusing on rivers because so much of plastic pollution in the ocean and on the beaches come from rivers. It's about 90% of everything that washes up in the ocean come from land-based sources, so predominantly rivers. And so, you know, still, you know, still young, but motivated, we Googled most polluted river in the world. And the first thing that showed up was this photo. And this photo is, you know, of a young kid picking out valuable plastic, pretty much trash scavenging, making two to $3 on a good day um, in this river called the Chitarum, which is in Indonesia. Um, this river is on the neighboring island of Bali on an island called Java. And what's scary about this river is that 25 million people rely on this water to live. So they use this water to wash their clothes. They use this water to, they boil this water to cook their food in. Um, and it's pretty much become a dumping site because waste management is essentially um, not very well structured in Indonesia, unfortunately. And so with my brother, uh, four years ago, we thought, what can we do to raise awareness about you know, this river that's in our backyard, that you know, people are, are getting diseases, people are, are really struggling because of the quality of this water. And we came up with the idea to build two kayaks out of 300 plastic bottles each and go down the Chitaran River from source all the way to the sea, um, to the Java Sea, it's about 60 kilometers. Um, so we built these two plastic bottle kayaks. I was 18 at the time, my brother was 20. And, uh, you know, we really uh, went into this and jumped into this project, not really knowing what to expect and what to come of it. But it took us two weeks. We were living uh, with local community along the river. So we really got to, to understand the, the lifestyle that they were living as a result of this, of this river. Um, we documented our journey. We um, released our videos on social media. And four weeks later, we get a message from the Minister of the Environment of Indonesia asking us to fly back to Indonesia, or sorry, back to where the river was in Bandung. Um, and he essentially said, because of your video, we want to create a rehabilitation plan to clean up the river. So stay in touch and, um, and we'll keep you posted. And we were mind blown, we were so excited. Um, but four months later, we get a call inviting us back to the river and there, we were incre incredibly amazed. Um, and the president of Indonesia to the left, uh, Jokowi, that's a photo with him and my brother, um, was there and announced a full seven-year cleanup plan to clean up the Chitaran River over the next seven years. And he hired 7,000 military soldiers. So on the right, you can see you know, military soldiers cleaning up this river on a daily basis. And so this was three years ago. Um, and in this upcoming February, we're celebrating the half year, the half year, uh, the half mark of the cleanup. So already we're seeing incredible, um, incredible changes in the quality of the river. So, you know, from what started as a really simple idea, um, something crazy even to go down the most polluted river in the world, actually convinced um, the Indonesian president to hire his, like a massive chunk of his military force to clean up this river. So we were extremely motivated, um, inspired to see, you know, so much change from a government perspective. Uh, and so this inspired a few other projects that are uh, in the, that are a little bit crazy. Um, so we've actually sailed down the entire length of the Mississippi River. Um, so in this photo, this is a boat that we built out of 800 plastic bottles and reclaimed wood. Um, the Mississippi River is one of the biggest rivers uh, in the world. It's in the United States. And so we sailed down from Minneapolis all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, again, raising awareness about the issues of plastic pollution and the importance of our, of our rivers. Um, this was a 56 day expedition. Uh, we stand up paddled down two of the most polluted waterways in America, which are actually both located here in New York City, um, the Newtown Creek and the Gowanus Canal. Um, and this time advocating for the toxic chemicals that are, you know, being leached into, into these rivers. Um, and more recently, uh, about six months ago, I finished running from, the, from New York City 
all the way to Los Angeles. So 5,000 kilometers running approximately uh, 40 kilometers a day. Uh, and here I was advocating again for plastic pollution, but really trying to bring the ocean to middle America. Um, unfortunately, you know, you, the US is such a big country and uh, only a few states are coastal, coastal states. So they don't necessarily understand the impacts of ocean pollution, of plastic pollution, or the importance of our rivers. Um, and so this is a, a funny, a funny comment that I like to make. I was running one day uh, on this highway in Nevada and realized that it was the exact same photo or the exact same road that Forrest Gump was running on. So there was a, a family of tourists that were taking photos and I asked them to run behind me to take the photo. But um, in this trip, you know, I was running for 191 days, um, almost 5,000 kilometers, 40 kilometers a day, six days a week, um, which equates to 117 marathons. Um, and I partnered up with Party for the Oceans, an environmental organization that I'm sure some of you may have heard of. They partner up with Adidas and they make shoes that are made out of 11 repurposed plastic bottles collected from shorelines around the world. Um, so I ran from New York City to LA in these shoes, but also along the way, um, I was trying to speak to as many communities as possible to raise awareness, to educate. Um, so I spoke to over 30 schools um, try to meet with as many local mayors and as many towns uh, on my journey in the 13 states that I ran in, um, a few governors of states. But what I quickly realized, um, which relates you know, to, to a lot of European countries, is that the US is not necessarily like Indonesia, where you can uh, go down a river for two weeks and create this massive movement. Um, here, it was a lot more local scales or local scale. Um, and smaller scale, you know, the schools that I, I spoke at and that I met, um, some of them are now going plastic free, but really advocating for the fact that every single step matters. So, you know, I took 6.5 million steps and a big part of my message was that, you know, every single uh, step matters, whether it's using a reusable bottle um, or whatever it is that, um, that people, that the steps that people take can have a lasting impact. Um, and so this, uh, brings me to, you know, what's next? Uh, we love expeditions, but that's not the only thing we do. Um, one of the, one of our big projects right now, which is really exciting, um, is we really realize the importance of rivers. They really, you know, carry life from land to sea. Um, they're everywhere. And like I said, 90% of plastic in the ocean come from rivers. Um, and so we recently engineered um, different systems uh, essentially like barriers that we're putting in rivers uh, to stop the flow of plastic going into the ocean. Uh, and so we're, you know, we're trying to make these solutions very low cost, um, very replicable. Um, and we're building a platform online for, to make these solutions open source, um, to really try to grow this solution to as many rivers as possible. We're starting with Bali in Indonesia, where my brother lives, um, because it's really our home and it's really, uh, the place where we we have the most amount of uh, partners, but um, I really think that this project, you know, has a lot of potential when it comes to cleaning rivers. Um, we have two different solutions that we're offering. The one on the left is a trash boom, which is for a river anywhere between five to twenty meters in width. Um, and as you can see, there's these uh, smaller elements that you know where you can attach to the scale for a big river, as you can see in the photo on the left side. Um, and then we have the trash block to the right, which is essentially a steel frame uh, because in Indonesia and in a lot of Southeast Asian countries, the gutters are actually open air. And so, you know, you have so much um, trash accumulating in these gutters. Um, and so we're, we've, we've come up with this solution that's, um, that is essentially, you know, just like a steel frame that we're putting in these, in these gutters um, and in the irrigation systems of the rice fields. Um, but so this is, you know, our, our biggest project right now. Um, and we're super excited for it. We're collecting um, a lot of trash on a daily basis. Our goal is to have 20 rivers protected by the end of this year um, and 100 rivers protected by the end of 2021. Um, so we're really working um, as much as we can to clean our rivers because it really is, you know, rivers that I think we should be tackling when it comes to um, ocean pollution. You have some amazing organizations out there 
um, like the Ocean Cleanup and other amazing organizations who are tackling ocean pollution. But when you look at countries like Indonesia or a lot of Southeast Asian countries, there's a lot of these smaller rivers and smaller creeks and gutters that people aren't necessarily paying attention to, where the inflow and So with all this trash, we're building a research station in Bali to collect everything. We have a, a team that uh, picks up all this garbage, we sort it, we wash it. And then right now we're selling it to multiple recycling uh, partners, but in the long run, um, with Make a Change, we'd love to come up with a product uh, to build out of all this plastic we're accumulating because the inventory, as you can imagine on this photo to the left, uh, there's just so much trash, which is very unfortunate. Um, but for us, we really see value in this trash. Um, there's a lot of organic waste that we're collecting that, that goes straight to landfill or we compost it. But of, out of all the plastic we're seeing, um, you know, the same types of plastic, we're seeing plastic bottles, which can be recycled. Uh, we're seeing plastic bags, uh, a lot of sandals. And unfortunately, in Southeast Asia, you have a lot of these plastic sachets, which are really thin, um, a really thin plastic that is pretty much food packaging, which is um, hard to recycle. But with it, um, we want to do something with it as well. But, you know, this is, um, this is our, our big project right now. We're super excited for it. Um, I'd love to talk to some of you about this project um, or if some of you have tackled, you know, rivers as well. But um, again, the goal is to have 100 rivers by December 2021. Um, and we're super excited for this. Um, and um, yeah, that's uh, my presentation. And uh, thank you for, for listening and thank you for, uh, for tuning in. Okay. Hi, Sam, I'm back. Hey. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for your presentation. Uh, it's really insightful and yeah, like everything you have been doing makes so much sense and it has so much impact that you can directly see, right? Because I understand, or I guess that when you see this type of rivers and then you say, okay, let's do this cleanup. And once you are done, you see everything clean, um, you know, the satisfaction should be high, you know, sometimes, is uh, to be a bit selfish, no, but it's also like I did this, you know, I make this space clean. And I guess this is also something that sometimes uh, when we speak about zero waste, many people don't think, um, okay, it doesn't matter what I do, uh, you don't have you don't see the impact like really or directly on your daily life, but with things like that, you see it, no, so you feel much better, I guess. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think that going to your point with the zero waste, you know, just seeing a lack of, or, you know, your trash significantly reduce, you know, that's also, it feels good. You know, you look at your trash, you do a trash audit around your home. And when you live zero waste, or you try to live as low waste as possible, you see your garbage bin has, you know, so much less plastic that definitely feels good, but you're right. River cleanup, um, it's the great satisfaction comes out of cleaning it. Unfortunately, you know, river cleaning is really not something that I want to spend the rest of my life doing. It's really disaster relief efforts, but um, there's great satisfaction from cleaning it. And then the next day, you know, that trash comes right back. Uh, so focusing on education. Uh, Sam, we cannot hear you now. Hi. No, I see your lips are moving, but I cannot listen to you just to be sure like people can hear you or just to be sure that it's not all me. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, you no me? yeah. You can hear me now? Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, I was just saying that there's great satisfaction that comes out of cleaning this river, but or these rivers, but the very next day the trash comes right back. Um, and so, you know, focusing on um, on awareness, on education and um, really trying to find solutions uh, to the plastic so that this plastic doesn't flow down the river in the first place. Yeah, so, and I have a question because I can imagine you and your siblings being kids and realizing how is that moment that you tell to your parents, look, we need to clean this river, no? Because I can imagine when 
when you have young kids and your kids suddenly tells you that no how how was that moment how was the beginning yeah i mean at the beginning you know it was it was not really big picture it was more how can we help right now um so when i was 12 we you know we just thought that cleaning the beaches was the thing the right thing to do my parents weren't involved at all you know they used plastic back then um we just saw it and saw the beaches and we we're like wow like this is a big problem um i don't know if you've traveled to bali but no. it's unfortunate how how much plastic is there and it's you know bali is just one example out of thousands of places around the world but um i guess we quickly saw that there was really a community aspect um and it's like a river cleanups every weekend we organize river cleanups in indonesia mm -hmm. and we're really seeing a community come together because you know, it's a common purpose. People are seeing these rivers in their own backyards, next to their houses, next to people's schools, next to businesses. Um, so people are realizing that this is a big problem. Yeah. I think a lot of times they just don't know how to how to solve it or how to act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. So I just want to say to our audience, like, feel free now if you have any questions for Sand, you can put them on the chat and we will read through them and now what i want to ask you sam is i know you are now in the us you told me you're there you moved there permanently and that you have a new challenge so i want to just ask you a bit about that you are trying to be zero ways understand now that uh, the moment is not the easiest with everything we have lived in the last months and when you need to find for zero waste solutions you always have a time of adapting yourself, uh, finding uh, places where you live and just comparing, no? So how is this been for you, your zero waste challenge in New York? Sure. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the zero waste bulk stores here are closed right now. So, you know, it, it's tough when it comes to uh, buying things in bulk, like Whole Foods is a big, um, grocery store here in New York that usually you can buy, you know, pasta in bulk, rice in bulk. Um, they still have certain things, but the the options before the pandemic were a lot, um, a lot more vast. But I think something that I've realized by, you know, going on this challenge of living zero waste is that if you take it one room at a time, it's a lot easier. So, you know, I started with my bathroom, uh, buying uh, shampoo and conditioner that comes in bar as opposed to the bottle. Um, creating my own uh, washing products with vinegar uh, in the kitchen, buying a, a brush that's not those plastic sponges. Um, if you really take it one at a time, one step at a time, one room at a time, um, it's it's very feasible and doable. Yeah, I totally agree, actually. And this has been a bit also my path through zero ways. That is also why we are actually are here today. And I think at the beginning, you just say, okay, I have so many things to change and you see easily how to change, but to see how many things you must change can be overwhelming, no? So the solution mm -hmm. definitely is one step at a time. Um, yeah, for me, the solution was to just say, okay, what are the things I want to change? What are the things I can change? And then do a bit of research about them and just try to make a change a week. So at the beginning it was quite active. So also it's a bit of this uh, satisfa satisfactory thing, no? that you see week after week, you are making changes and the progress is fast now, but in some moment you just need to go a step behind and see what else you can do. But yeah, like everything has a process, it has a core. And I think, uh, yeah, everything can be done. So let me go to the chat. We have a few questions in here. So Juan Pablo is asking, between the moment of you and your brothers cleaning the river and the president of Indonesia joining and putting the military to it, uh, what do you think was the key point in which uh, that reaction from the authorities was catalyzed? So yeah, what was, uh, what was pushing the government to really uh be there and be doing something right no i think that with um well the first thing i think that you really have to sometimes do crazy things to get people's attention and um you know it, it sounds it sounds very simple but like running across the united states is not 
you know, something that I would do again, <laughs> but um, it's, it's, you know, those crazy ideas really has power to, to change. Um, and then I think what also really influenced the government was that we brought cameras with us and we documented everything and really use it, utilizing the tools at our fingertips, um, like social media, for example. So we, we published the videos online on Facebook um, and overnight it got 50 million views on Facebook, which is incredible, which, you know, we never expected, but I think that was, that was really the catalyst and Indonesia is a very big Facebook audience. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess they must have seen the video um, and, you know, it's, it's a very big country. There's a lot of rivers, but they maybe didn't realize that the, the truth was, um, there's a lot of false promises. Um, but yeah, I, I guess utilizing social media, utilizing video um, and the power of shocking imagery, you know, I think that seeing the plastic bottle kayaks going down the river and seeing the very materials that pollute the river uh, as a vessel for change and as a vessel for um, for this expedition was was what made um, this expedition so successful. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I guess like having the president of the country, you are leaving, paying attention to you, like from one day to another should be like really shocking, no? And actually creating so much uh, impact and change, no? Putting the the military is there to clean. So yeah, that have been for sure like really a wow, no? I guess. Yeah. No, I mean, we definitely did not expect that to happen when we first came up with the concept. Uh, you know, at first, maybe we thought we would get a few thousand views. Uh, our friends would stop using plastic. But um, no, we were very, very lucky. We were very, very grateful. And and obviously, huge kudos to the government of Indonesia for, for taking the stand and for taking action. Yeah. So we have another question here from Lara. Um, so what do you know? Do you know, sorry, if there are any policy measures going to be taken by the American government to keep the rivers cleaner? I think that's a great question. Um, I, you know, I would love to answer that question with more details, but I think that, um, I, I don't know, I don't right now, right now know of any uh, detailed plan to keep the rivers clean. Um, I know that, for example, nine out of the 13 states um, that I ran through on my run across the US have this thing called the ban on the ban, which is essentially the state banning the ability of a city or a municipality to ban single use plastics. So for example, if New York City, well, New York City is a bad example, but if, um, Well, Sam, yeah, we lost you. Uh, oh, here you are again. Sorry for that. We are getting Sam back to the stage. Hey. Yeah, here you are. Can so you sorry. Me? Go ahead. No, it's okay. Yes. Um, I was just saying that uh, if a small town in Pennsylvania, for example, wanted to ban single-use plastic bags, um, the state would sue them because there's a huge... Uh, there's so much lobbying going on with the plastic manufacturers and the petrochemical plants. So it's very unfortunate. Um, right now with the Trump administration, um, it's not necessarily going in the right direction. So uh, it's tough to, and I know that you have a lot of conservancy groups, you have a lot of um, grassroots movements, whether it's the Mississippi River or the Colorado River, which are the two biggest rivers. Um, but I don't know right now of any, you know, action plan um, being taken by the government. Yeah, no problem. And I guess like policies are also a bit difficult. And as you say, um, there's so many people behind not interested in the changes. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's really difficult to put um, some program or so make some policies you know, for it. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to jump to the last question that we have from our audience and is do you want to take your cleaning methods to other parts of the world? Yes, yeah, so, so it, that project is called Sungai Watch. Um, it, it means uh, river watch in Indonesian. And with it, we really want to create a platform that um, is online and it's open source so that you know we're going to make tutorial videos uh, on how to build these trash solutions so that anybody can replicate. We're really making them low cost, replicable, 
solutions so that anybody can, you know, take them and create them in their rivers in any part of the world that they live in. Right now, we're really focusing on Bali because it's our home. We really want to um, create a proof of concept. Like I said, 20 rivers by the end of this year, 100 rivers by the end of next year. Uh, but yeah, the, the long-term goal and the dream would be to see these solutions um, and, you know, really collaborating with other um, other amazing river networks, whether it's the Great Bubble Barrier out of Amsterdam um, or really any other cleanup organizations that tackle river. Um, because I do think that, you know, collaboration is key when you're working on something like this. Um, awesome. But yeah, right now, really focusing on Indonesia because that's where we're HQ'd, but uh, in the long run, Southeast Asia probably, just because it's um, mm -hmm. it's so prominent down there and it's definitely a solution that um, would apply to a lot of the smaller gutters in Southeast Asia. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, like, unfortunately, there's many problems in there. Also, Europe is a bit... Uh, part of this problem now we all know and we have seen all the news of uh, so much uh trash being shipped in there so i guess we really need to take action also from here from europe and see uh okay what is that we can do not to really avoid in the future to the need to clean rivers no but to see okay what do we do with our trash how do we manage it here are not make like there is no no problems at all absolutely mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. well sounds so we're coming to the end with you um well i'm really thankful you have been here today it has been really interesting i really like your mission and i really love like you are sharing all your movement also through all social media platform um i have seen also TikTok and that what makes you know the young generations to get really involved so i think it's also a really good platform for it so keep doing what you're doing is great and thank you so much also for doing it because uh, you are doing a great labor and thank you so much for being here today thank you carol thank you for having me and great job on the conference thank you so much i hope you you are enjoying as well thanks bye bye, -bye.